Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Deborah Cullinan, Chief Executive Officer of Yerba Buena Center for the Arts. Deborah has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Deborah, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So Yerba Buena Center is such an interesting institution in certain respects. It's neither fish nor fowl. Uh, Talk about Yerba Buena and its role in the San Francisco art scene. Mm -hmm. I love your characterization of it. So Yerba Buena Center for the Arts, which we affectionately call YBCA, uh, is actually a former project or a project of the former redevelopment agency of the state of California. So it's coming on its 25th anniversary, uh, born out of decades of strife and struggle, urban renewal. Um, it is part of what I think of as a community give back, as an offering from the city and from the development project that would last forever. Um, and so uh, we have this very unusual mandate where we're the people center. We are the cultural organization for the city. Uh, we are not a museum. Uh, we don't collect art. Uh, we're multidisciplinary. We do theater and performance, lots of dance. Uh, we also have a film and uh, video program. We do a lot of civic engagement work, a lot of work in the public realm, and our exhibition program is also very huge. So I think of YBCA as the citizen institution. I think it's our mandate to be a civic asset, to be of value to our community. And we're located you know, in the heart of one of the greatest cities in the world, a rapidly changing environment with uh, you know, all kinds of people engaging from you know, we're, right now we're experiencing Dreamforce, which is a convention that we call a citywide. It brings in about 160, 170,000 people to the city, at this, and they come from all over the place. At the same time, if you go to the gardens in the afternoon, you'll see families, you'll see musicians and artists, you'll see homeless people, everyone gathering, everyone enjoying uh, what this beautiful amenity has to offer. One of the things that I find so fascinating is, as you say, it's, it's not a museum yet you have exhibitions. It's not a theater, yet you have theatrical performance. It's not a music hall, yet you have musical performance. You have dance. You have all sorts of different usages of this facility. So talk about the physical space. Let's, let, let's sort of tour virtually sure. that physical space and the different types of facilities, the different types of attributes that the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts offers the Absolutely. public. Absolutely. So, so YBCA has two main facilities. Uh, the first one we call our Forum Building, designed by the great architect Maki. Uh, and it is a flexible space that was envisioned to be able to be anything to everyone and everything to anyone. In that space, uh, we can have everything from you know, uh, new dance, contemporary dance, concerts, we do convenings, uh, we might have meetings. We, during, during Dreamforce, we might be hosting Mark Benioff doing press conferences. So it's one of those spaces that can be just about anything. Uh, we also have multiple exhibition spaces in that building. Uh, we have very large exhibition spaces on our ground floor. We're currently doing an exhibition with Tom Sachs, who is an international superstar artist, just an extraordinarily creative, um, an amazing uh, maker, sculptor, artist who um, has brought to us his space program. And that exhibition is uh, all about going to Europa. And you know what I would say about YBCA and why we would work with an artist like Tom is that we're an institution that believes that everyone is creative. Everyone it can be imaginative. And if we as people can imagine something different than what we have today, then it's ours. So Tom as a maker, can decide that he wants his own space program. And he's going to build it in his own way, and he's going to go to the icy surface of Europa, um, just along with everyone else who's trying to get to Mars or to the moon. Uh, that exhibition is pretty extraordinary. So which part of your revenue, what, what percent of your revenue is earned, earned revenue, so associated with tickets or memberships, uh, those kinds of things, uh, versus those that are purely philanthropic, somebody writing you a check? M most of our revenue is earned. Uh, and I actually don't know the percentage off the top of my head, um, but because we have these really significant fundraising events that are considered earned revenue, mm -hmm. and also because of the, the rentals. Well, that's interesting. So your fundraising events are considered earned revenue because you're providing a service through the, the actual event itself. Yeah, and, and these events, we, we do a house raffle. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's, that's, you know, that was the genius of my predecessor. Uh, and, uh, Ken. Yes, Ken Foster. And it was birthed around the time of the economic crisis. Right. 
Uh, and it was a really bold response to the fact that these models are really failing. Um, and how are we going to support entrepreneurial art centers if we're, and we want them to be, you know, as we talked about earlier, inclusive and representative of the communities around them, and we want to shift the board models, and how are we going to do all that if we don't learn how to be entrepreneurial in our revenue? And what is your budget annually? Uh, we're just under $20 million organization. In terms of, of how you um, allocate that budget, there is a piece that is about administrative overhead, finance, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, but there is also a budget uh, dedicated to programming and then you have to think about how you're going to spend that budget yeah. across the different types of programs that you that you have how do you organize your programs and how do you organize community engagement to attract people to attend those various programs and meet community needs that's uh, I love the question because if we if we are only able to allocate resources to programs that are trendy that are you know, receiving grant foundations this year or the next year, or grant foundation income this year or the next year, uh, then we will just have this uneven um, program platform. So, you know, again, another reason to keep your sources of revenue as unrestricted and flexible as possible. So we have four curatorial departments, visual arts, performing arts, film and video, and the civic engagement department. We consider civic engagement a curatorial department. The senior curators collaborate together to, to come up with a plan. And the YBCA 100 framework that I mentioned earlier helps to guide that. So list makers are often artists we're commissioning. Um, we're looking for as much cross uh, departmental collaboration as possible. Um, we have a number of events that are all hands on deck. Uh, we've been really working on sort of removing the silos which I think is one of the challenges for a multidisciplinary center where it becomes very isolated each project is almost its own organization, and we're really working very hard to um, bring everybody together to understand we are an organization that's trying to achieve something larger than any one department. So how do you categorize the, the, the types of programs that you provide to assure a balance? Well, the neat thing about having lead curators in each of these departments is that they each have their own responsibility for assuring that our spaces are activated that there's a balance within each program. And how many lead curators? So there are four, and then they come together with their teams in order to look for integration, in order to plan it all together. So it's it's a it I, I think of it as a sort of it it goes up and down. So you need you need to hire the curators, the passionate ones, the ones who are born to make these kinds of experiences for people, and give them the space to plan out their own curatorial program within the framework of the organization. So what is the future of the Urban Awareness Center for the Arts? Do you, do you see yourself uh, evolving either physically or programmatically over the next several years? Or is this more a question of, of taking the concept and, and assuring quality, assuring community service? It's definitely a continued evolution. Um, I think these, these organizations will have to be dynamic. And, you know, again, I think that Art centers like this can be very key to our cities. We can be the place where we can grapple with difficult issues. We have an unusual ability to bring very different kinds of people together. Uh, and so I think our program will have to be responsive. We'll need to remain flexible, nimble. Uh, and we want to pioneer the role that art centers play in civic life. And we don't want to just do that for ourselves. We want to ignite a movement. We're interested in how art centers are acting, being across the country. Um, I'm often touring, I'm, I'm going to Gothenburg, you know, in a couple of weeks to speak with a group of people there about how to think about evolving the sector. And I think, you know, that's the gift that we want to give. So in terms of, of your needs into the future, of course, resources are always needed. <laughs> uh, are, are, are there other uh, types of, of needs that, that uh, you see uh, having to, to fulfill mm. um, as the chief executive of this organization mm -hmm. in concert with the board and your mm -hmm. staff? Yeah, I, th I think there are m many. Um, I think there's a big question about how boards for these kinds of organizations will evolve. Uh, we actually have the benefit of working with the Irvine Foundation and New California Arts Fund. Uh, and I'm, I'm collaborating with a couple of exceptional colleagues, uh, Lori Falk, I mean, Lori Fogarty at uh, Oakland Museum and Susie Falk at uh, Cal Shakes, and we're putting together a day-long symposium about governing for social impact in the arts. 
really looking at how does how do these how do these bodies evolve and you know in what way do we think about um, the way that arts organizations have uh, operated and have depended on their boards and how can we move those things forward so I feel like that's a big question um, I think that arts organizations including mine will need to continue to evolve the way we think about development and fundraising um, you know I think more entrepreneurial activity, learning from our colleagues in the social impact space. We have a very big project right now funded by the Serdna Foundation that's looking at a particular piece of that space and in collaboration with some key social finance people. Um, and I also think just our staffs in general. We need, we need people are, that are coming into the workforce who are flexible and fluid, who can in, integrate, relate across sector. Um, I th it's not uncommon for the arts to um, you know, in art schools and arts organizations to sort of train people to be really good in a, in a small field or really good in a community. Uh, but I think we need to be thinking about how we live in the world and how we're negotiating, collaborating, and working with people no matter what sector they're in. An interesting dialogue to be continued. Deborah yes. Cullinan, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Yorba Buena Center for the Arts. Thank you so much for the work that you do to invite community engagement with the arts. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so much for having me.